This trick I'm about to show you is definitely the best trick I have ever explained on YouTube and probably the best one I will ever explain. And the best part is that it's completely self-working and that you will learn it in less than a couple of minutes. And even more, the spectator will do everything. They will shuffle the cards, they will make all the, all the choices. So I'm sure you won't believe all these things I'm saying until you see the explanation. So let's see first the trick. I have here a poker deck of cards, but you can use any deck you have. We are going, of course, to shuffle the deck. And we are going to divide the deck in a couple of packets, like so, like four packets, for example. And the spectator can choose the amount of cards we want. So if he wants less cards here, okay, we can have less cards. If he wants more here and less here, there's no problem. If he wants to move a couple of cards, it doesn't matter. Even the spectator can shuffle these packets. Each spectator will shuffle each one of these uh, packets. So this one is shuffled, and they can shuffle any way they want. So they can a rifle suffer or a cat they can mix like so they can even mix packets with them and then divide them it doesn't matter four completely random packet packets shuffled by the spectators and we are going to shuffle them again but face up and face down so the spectator can choose which packet he wants face up and which one he wants face down imagine they want this one face up and they want this one face down and they can shuffle themselves themselves so they will push the, this packet inside the other one and now they can choose which packet they want to shuffle the next one so completely free i promise this will be all performed by the spectators so imagine they choose uh, this one and they can again uh, choose which packet they want to to flip so imagine they want to flip this one and now they're going to Mix them again. And the same with the last one. So they can choose which one to flip and they shuffle the cards. Okay, so we have a completely shuffled cards with face up and face down cards, which we are going to square. With four packets chosen by the spectator in a shuffle deck, everything completely free. But I'm going to order all the cards with used just a magic movement. Are you ready? Three, two, one, done. All the cards completely ordered. I know you don't believe me because this would have all been made by the spectator. They would have mixed the cards, chose the packets, everything. But these cards are now in perfect. Okay, maybe, okay, no, let, let me try again. In perfect order. Okay, I think I messed up somewhere, I don't know. Uh, th th this was too, too impossible, I know, but... But let me, let me try something, because I don't know if you noticed, but there's a paper right here from the beginning. And if you see, there's a number. Number eight, right here. Number four, right here. Number seven, right here. Number five, five again, right here, six, three and two, and compl a complete impossible coincidence. Welcome to Lucen and Cards. My name is Julio Rivera, and yes, today I'm about to teach you the best trick ever explained on YouTube, and I'm going to do it completely free. So the only thing I ask in exchange is to please subscribe and hit the like button. It's completely free, and it will take you less than two seconds. You can now hit the like button and hit the subscribe button, and I will be really thankful. Even if you don't want to do it right now, please practice the trick, perform it to some friends, and when you get them completely amazed, come back and then subscribe and like the video. Of course, this is the best trick explained on YouTube, but there is more impossible magic that I know and that I can teach you for free, but not here. If you want that, you can go to illusionandcards.com slash learn. You have the link at the info cards and at the description, and I will send you directly to your email my best tricks, tips, and tricks. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, let's learn it. First thing to know is that for this trick, you don't need to use a prediction. You can actually use a prediction with a random number, but you can also predict a date. For example, imagine that the 10th of July of 2013, something happened, and that's important for the spectator. Then you can predict that number, or maybe a phone number, or even without a prediction, you can use so at the end that a suite 
is completely ordered. In this case, the spades suite from uh, ace, the ace of spades to the king of spades. In fact, we are going to use this for the tutorial because it's easier to follow a completely ordered uh, suite than random cards. But I prefer to use random cards with a prediction, with a date, with a phone number or something that's relevant for the spectator than a suite because at the end it's more magical when it seems that you as if, as if you messed up but then there's a final prediction that gets everyone completely amazed so for this tutorial i'm going to use an order suite but again you can use anything any cards you want okay so now you have this on top and the most important thing in this trick are the little details because the technique is so easy actually the spectator does almost everything 95 percent of the trick is done by the spectator but the little details is what makes this trick great the story you tell the the things you make and how you make them so in reality what is happening in, what is happening is that we are putting away these cards okay these order cards that we have our stack of the spade suite then we are doing any, any piles we want, spectators are mixing them, it doesn't matter. And then we are mixing them in between. And finally, we are putting these cards face up and mixing them. That's actually what is happening. And it seems ridiculous and obvious this way, of course, because you've seen what has happened. But those details I told you are the ones that are going to make the difference, that are going to make the spectator believe that this trick is completely impossible and you saw it yourself at the at the presentation so that's just to say that please uh, be be pay attention to the details because those are the most important at this trick they are not difficult but they are important okay so we have the the cards we of our prediction uh, order stack or anything we want at the top and now we can shuffle the rest of the deck in many ways for example we can do an overhand shuffle in which we shuffle the bottom pile and then the rest we put it back on top this way we have these cards completely ordered for this we hold with our middle and ring finger on the top short edge and thumb on the bottom short edge we put the deck perpendicular to our left hand on top of the middle ring and pinky finger the index is on top and we curl these fingers to hold the deck like so the thumb goes to the edge of the deck and with this hand we're going to move up and down while we push cards okay so we have to peel some cards and then when we reach the end we put these cards back on top so it seems as if we're mixing the cards but these cards are on order it doesn't matter if this is not the best false shuffle there is because later on the, the spectators will mix their own their own packets so they will really think that the cards are mixed up okay but we can do this or we can even perform a riffle shuffle in which we shuffle the first half of the deck but then the rest we put it on top so these cards doesn't get mixed okay so or order stack that's it that it's on the top has to be always in order okay now that the deck seems to be shuffled we say to the spectator okay we're going to make uh, four piles for example one here uh, actually tell me stop whenever you want here okay perfect and another one here okay perfect okay so what just happened is the following it seems as if the spectator had a, a freely a freely choice when selecting these piles but in reality we selected this pile and they selected this three because again this is the one that we care this we don't care in this trick 95% of the choices will be made by the spectator but the 5% that we made we make they will allow us to perform the trick okay so the way i make it is important i use this the first pile as an example so i don't give it too much attention i just say okay we're going to make a couple of piles like four for example okay so while i'm talking about making four piles i already put the first pile with our cards how do i know that these are our cards because on the last one, on the king, I have a mark right here on both corners so that it doesn't matter the way that the card is. With a pen the same color as the, uh, as the card, I make two marks, one here and one here. They are really small marks that they are completely invisible, but when you know that they are there, you can, you can watch them. So right here, I see the mark, the mark, okay? So I know that 
my last card and I cut there. Or you imagine that your prediction has seven numbers. Well, if you have seven numbers, you can count in your mind. Three, six, and seven. And that's all. You don't need a mark. You can count. But the important thing is that the first pile is made by you and that that pile has the cards that you need or you have in your prediction or an order stack. Okay? For this, I use a mark on both corners, but if it's a small number, you can count inside your mind uh, like this. Three, six, and seven. Okay? So... I know there are seven here. Okay, that's one choice. The other one is just watching the mark and putting the first one here. But the important thing is that we say, okay, I'm going to make a couple of piles, like, like four. And I have already put the, the, uh, put the first one here without giving it too much attention, just as an example. This will make the spectator think that he chose all the piles because the first one didn't have that many attention and then he will have a completely freely, complete free choice. Okay, so now we put the first pile, we say, I'm going to make four pile, like four piles, for example. Actually, tell me stop whenever you want. Right here, okay, you want more cards, less cards? It doesn't matter, like for example, he wants three more, less cards? Okay, right here. And again, tell me stop. Actually, we can even mix them. You have to create chaos, but chaos only with these three piles, okay? So we say, we can even, even mix them. Tell me stop whenever you want. Uh, right here, okay, uh, use, uh, where do you want to cut? Here? Here, here, okay, perfect. So we have now four piles, four completely random piles. So we are giving the illusion that is a free, a free choice, but again, the first pile that we didn't give it too much attention is uh, chosen by us, okay? So now, now the spectator thinks that the deck is shuffled, that they chose four random piles, and they, now they are going to shuffle again. So this will give more, uh, a better illusion that the decks are completely random and completely chosen by them. So what I do is, if I have multiple spectators, I give each spectator one pile and I keep it, I, and I keep one for myself to make it uh, as an example, to teach them what they have to do. Okay, so I'd say, okay, so one for you, one for you, one for you and this one for me. And what you're going to do now is just uh, mix the cards, uh, however you want. You can cut them, you can shuffle, yeah, like, like so. And people will start to shuffle the, the cards. And while they mix, they will be focused on their own packet because they are part of the trick. So they will be like really focused trying to miss the cards. Some of them will fall, they will get it again and they will mix, okay? While they do that, you only make a false shuffle. One really easy is the following. You get a couple of cards, you put it in between your index and middle finger, so you have a break in between both, both piles, and then you start putting cards on the bottom, like so. In reality, you're not mixing them, you're just getting some cards, putting some cards on the bottom, more cards on the bottom, and more cards on the bottom. Again, like this, is obvious, but when you do it like so, when you seem to be shuffling, it seems uh, really, really nice. So I'm just grabbing some cards, putting here, here, and here, and the cards are incomplete order. But the, the now, right now, each spectator will be shuffling their cards. So there's like a lot of noise and, and a lot of things going on. So they won't even notice. You don't need to perform a really good false shuffle. Uh, there are many ways shuffle like this uh, overhand shuffle in which you don't shuffle the cards, but it looks like so. If you want to, me, uh, to make a tutorial, let me know in the comments. And now, it seems completely impossible because the packet seems to be chosen by the spectator, but in reality you only chose this one, and they seem to have mixed the cards. Now you have all the packets right here, and again, this is your uh, special packet, your order packet. You're going to grab any two packets, in, and one of those is going to be your order packet, and you're going to let the spectator choose. Which one do you want to flip? Imagine they choose this one, it's okay, it doesn't matter right now. You are going to do this so they can mix. They will mix themselves. I only did do this because it's easier for the spectator to mix them. But if the spectator knows how to make a reverse shuffle, they can, or you can do it yourself, okay? So the cards get mixed. And what happens is the following. We are going to keep always this packet or order packet with our prediction opposite to the rest of the cards. So now we're going to do the... the we're going to tell the spectator, okay, so the cards are mixed, choose any other packet, okay? They choose this one, and we tell them, okay, do you want me to flip, do you want to flip this packet or this packet? If they flip this packet, these random cards will be mixed with random cards, but our stack will be different, opposite to the rest, okay? 
And if they don't flip this one, but they flip this one, it's the same. Our packet will be face up and the rest of the cards will be face down, okay? So in the first packet, two things can happen. They can flip the other packet in which we suffer and that's it. Then we tell them which one do you want to flip, this one or this one, and they just flip and suffer. It's everything okay. Or they can flip our packet. It doesn't matter if they flip this packet and mix them, then we turn it over, tell them to choose any other packet and to let them decide which one they want to turn. So again, we are giving them 95% of the decisions. It seems a free choice, but always controlling the small percentage that allows us to make this trick that is only keeping this packet different to the rest. Of course, if we do it like this, okay, so if we do it like this, it's obvious that we are mixing all the cards except for this packet. But if we do it instead of like this, mixing, really mixing them, like so, okay, so we get these two packets, we turn over one, we make it like, th like this, okay, so the spades suite is face down, then we tell them which packet do you want to flip, imagine they flip this one, okay, spades suite is again face down, and then now we need to flip them, look, this is face down and the spades is uh, also face down, so we are going to tell them, okay, which one do you want to flip, if they flip this one, it's okay, if they flip this one, it's also okay, so now they mix, and when they mix, it's important to show, to show really clean that both packets are, that the cards, there are some cards face up, some cards face down, the, the image is really, really clean. And now you square everything up and you have to make them believe that what you're going to do is real magic. So let them know, okay, I'm going to order all the cards. Snap your fingers, make a movement, anything you want. And when you show the cards, be impressed when you see the first face up card and say, okay, I mess up, oh, I'm sorry. Be like a little bit scared. And then uh, when you show again, then show that in fact it's not a mistake, it's that all the space cards are in order or that those cards, that seem random cards, are in fact your prediction, okay? So this is actually the trick. It's really, 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 really simple, but again, pay attention to, to the small details to make the impression that the spectator has made all the choices when in fact they made 95% and you made the 5% that allows you to perform this trick. Practice, watch again the video if you need. And if you enjoy, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Again, it's completely free. This is a really great trick that I gave it uh, to you for free. So I will be really thankful if you hit the like button. And if you want to learn better magic, subscribe to my newsletter at illusionandcards.com slash learn. Link, link at the info cards and at the description. It's completely free. And I try to share with you my best tips and tricks. So I hope you enjoy. I see you next week. Bye bye.